Welcome, and thank you for joining for another whiskey review. Today, we take a look at the Rare Malts Linkwood 23-year-old 1972. Dustin, this was sent to us by our favorite guy in Nashville. Sent us a couple of samples of some epic whiskeys. The first one we're going to take a look at here is a 23-year-old Linkwood from Rare Malts, 58.4% ABV, 1972. I guess this was bottled in 95, Mike. Like, That's I mean, wild. I mean, I know. Let's, 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 what has the Tennessee Whiskey Assassin been sitting on all this for? All right, Dustin, look. Clearly, he needed to send us samples. It just took him a while. He, didn't, had, he had to find out the right people to send him to. Hey, the right guys. So, like, with all the whiskey samples we get, we're going to do this blind. I have no idea. We have no idea what kind of whiskey this is as far as cask maturation, bourbon cask, cherry cask, mix, finish. All we know is, I'm assuming 58.4 is going to be cast strength. I would uh, say that's a pretty safe bet. Um, Linkwood does do a pretty decent uh, ABV. Um, the color definitely makes me think bourbon casker, maybe like a refilled cherry. Beautiful, beautiful gold. Yeah, it's a nice color. Lannister gold, if you're a Game of Thrones oh, fan, oh Dustin. God. I don't know if it's that dark, but anyway. <laughs> Jeez, that smells old. I mean, that smells like 30-plus-year-old whiskey, Mike. Jeez. Uh, vanilla loaf initially is what I'm getting, Dustin. I'm getting some smoke in here, Mike. What is going on? Liquid's not smoky. You're right. The, th uh, the thing right after vanilla is some type of smoke. Wood smoke? Yeah. Peat smoke? I don't know. I didn't think Linkwood was peated. None that we've had is. The 37's not. And that was from the 70s. <sighs> it was. 78. We're going to find out another distillery that we're trying. We're like, yeah, it's Highland or something. You know, people are like, yeah, that actually was heavily peated back then. We're like, oh. <laughs> we okay. got it. We got there. That explains it. We got there. God, this just has that refined, old, nosing whiskey. Um, rich, vibrant, has a touch of motor oil, a touch of like some kind of wine cask note. I don't know if it's coming from the malt. Linkwood is a very fruity malt. It, I was say, it is. This is fruity. Um, so Linkwood definitely could be producing that level of fruit. Yeah. I'm trying to think. I haven't had a Linkwood Independent that wasn't at least somewhat sherried um, in a while. And the official 37, I don't believe, was. I know I've had bourbon Linkwoods, but it's been a while. An Watermelon. Unas yeah, an, an unacidic lime. I would say the, the fruit notes, they're light fruit notes. You know, they're, they're the yellow fruits. I mean, maybe red fruits. But no acidity, no tartness, nothing that you would, none of the sharper notes that you would get from any fruit. It's almost like a fruit stew. See, I, I disagree. Actually, I get a little bit of tartness on the on the finish. Nothing, nothing crazy, but a little bit. That's where I get the watermelon note there. I wasn't actually getting the lemon loaf note you were getting initially. I'm getting it now. It took me a little bit. A little bit of that, like honey, not honey cake, but um, like you get lemon cake with like lemon drizzle with a white icing on top. I mean, I hate to just say this, but it smells like Linkwood. Um, and I'm trying to think what that means. Because Linkwood always, the ones I've had, are usually higher proof than maybe you would expect. They're like, I've got a lot of Linkwoods that are in the 17, you know, 18-year range that are still 60% ABV. And they have a sort of a harshness. But this has got a little bit more age. It's come down a bit. Um, that's why I'm kind of saying this smells more like 30 years old. Because the harshness has gone away, but there's sort of this like chestnut note that i get on some of those that this one's softened up and it's become more fruity but it still has this like hearty like center like just the pit too yeah there is a there's a similar vanilla style density to this I, I, i'm gonna say it's an oak note sort of vanilla oak note that was in the 37 that's here too it's, it's it adds a backbone to this yeah i mean it's it's like a beer nut or something kind of thing they're just in the middle and then everything else is around it is softer, lighter, sweeter, fruitier, beautiful. Here's almost sort of a wood chip of some, I wouldn't go as far as like cedar, but some type of a light wood, like a walnut wood shaving note. Yeah, the more I dig in, that slight acidity, slight tartness, and the wood are all one and the same. Now, since you said it, that lemon, that candy lemon note, <sighs> There, there is, you're right. I misspoke earlier. There is a bit of acidity coming out. Not much, though. It's pretty candied. 
No, no, no. It, it just, it's beautiful. It actually perfectly fits with everything else going on here. I mean, it, 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 it's necessary. It's, I think it's what makes this whiskey incredible on the nose. You know, and there's nothing like... Like, like a lot of times, like with a lemon note like this, I get it sometimes like in the old Lagavulin mm-hmm. twelves. But you know, there's peat to kind of cover up some of the off-putting notes. Like there's nothing here to really hide anything. When you say it's a very bright whiskey, to me, it's a very on-display malt. Like there isn't a lot really, you know, tr- as far as either a heavy cast maturation mm-hmm. or something weird in the distillate or peat in the whiskey that's kind of covering up anything. It's just all right here for you to see. Beautiful, light, sweet, airy, fresh spring notes. I was going to say that, lilac, that initial smoke note I was getting, I think what's kind of really driving that is actually it's a, it's a heavy wood with like a white spice kind of thing going on. I don't know what the spice is, but there's a couple different like whiter spices over this rich, not dark oak, but like just kind of light oak, uh, oak very American white oak. Kind yeah, of thing. yeah, very white. White oak is a good word, good descriptor. White oak. If there's any spice known to it, it's a light wood spice. Oh, it's very light spice. It's just like a, it's a dash of something. It's just giving it something. I don't know. It's, mm. I don't even know. I don't even know a spice. I want to say saffron just to make up a spice that I barely know what it smells like. <laughs> <laughs> they everyone else have a hard time really saying, huh? <laughs> Somebody, somebody's going to be like, that's not what saffron smells like. And I'm sitting here going, I have no idea what saffron smells like. But that word <laughs> sounds like what this smells like. <laughs> <laughs> I, I still keep getting some type of flower note on this, kind of in the background too. I said like a like a lilac, some type of light lavender, maybe. Yeah, there is orders on a soapy note. There's like a touch of like white powdered sugar, touch of like f- actual like flour, and then yeah, a little bit of like um, some kind of potpourri that you would just, but a very light potpourri. But you could see, you could smell this in a bathroom, you know, like some kind of soap. And then just man, here at the end, just a twinge of darkness. Like you, like you said, you'd almost give some some, some type of fortified wine cast. It isn't red; it's just a twinge. Of just, yeah, I wonder if there's maybe a maybe a sweet wisp of milk chocolate. I wonder if there's a white wine or a fino sherry type casking here. But again, this is just so liquid. Like, <laughs> right. It's just so liquid. I. Uh, I mean, the thirty-seven's a lot like this. There's a lot of similarities with that uh, thirty-seven-year-old two thousand. Thirty-seven's Diageo, darker. But, yeah, this is much more fruity. But again, spring, vibrant, bright. I'm trying to remember the last liquid. The problem is, the last time I had liquid that wasn't um, sherry cask, it was like ten years old, and it's just, you can't really compare that. Yeah, I'm still trying to put my finger on exactly what what is the distillery characteristics from liquid. That I can gravitate to no matter what cast maturation or age. It there's has. a certain fruitiness in there, and there's a little bit of like a, a wood hardiness, like in the center. Like I always get on Link Woods, but you know, I need like a flora and fauna example, maybe to get an official bottling, just to kind of go back. Um, because you know, independent bottlings, a lot of times they take on the characteristic of where they've aged. And I've had, but I've had North Star, I've had Caden Heads, I've had Scotch Malt Whiskey Society, so I've had quite a few Link Woods. So I feel like I should be getting closer. But it's so hard, man. I'm getting more vanilla now. Woo! Um, big time citrus. Citrus. Spice. Wow. There has been, as soon as I swallowed, the spice keeps swelling. It swelled for three or four seconds before it cut off. Big spice, big lemon, big oak. Very chewy vanilla oak. With just, woo, that spice almost brought tears to my eyes, Dustin. Mm hmm. A little bitey with that spice. Yeah. Lemon, lime, heavy yep. vanilla up front, and then goes right into a nice, rich oak, and then I'm starting to like water and salivate here. Yeah. <laughs> Don't move. I'm trying to avoid spitting here, guys. But yeah, then it gets pretty darn spicy. Oh, I mean, even the finish is left like peppers and spice. Oh, yeah. So this is definitely our buddy um, wanting to showcase a bourbon cask. Because I think we've actually had conversations where I'm not as big a bourbon cask fan as he is. I think he wanted to showcase a really complex, rich one. And that is what this is, folks. Really rich and complex. It is. It is. It, the acidity was there on the palate, boy. Yeah. I'm going to go really light on the water here initially because I might come back in for some more. Um, so. Yeah, very long linger. I mean, even on the sides, and the linger on the bottom is spice, man. I'm surprised how much lingers on my tongue. Like, I usually have my cheeks have a nice linger, but this is on my tongue even. What spice would you say this is? I mean, a pepper, like white pepper. Uh, I mean, it's wood oak. It's white pepper, a little bit of black pepper. You could convince me there's, like, hints of maybe even, like, a cayenne pepper, just the slightest 
I was going to say a cayenne pepper Touch. salt mix, maybe that we got flambéed or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's just whew. prickly, prickly spice. I would say. Uh, yeah, that is that is the beauty of uh, this. Probably a refilled bourbon cask. That cask had plenty of juice in it. Oh no! But the beauty of what it's done is it left that beautiful wood notes in this really vibrant fruity malt. <clears throat> Um, the nose, maybe I'm thinking 30 on the palate. It definitely drinks like the 23, it says. But in a really nice way. I mean, I really like because it's like it's not gotten like 30s, you start getting richer oak notes. This is still letting the sweetness and the fruitiness, the, there's even a little bit of a floral note in there. I mean, just, I told you there, there is like a lavender ish note to it. And it's not, it's not heavy. Like, usually you get those flower notes that are like heavy perfume notes, and it's not that. It's just a wisp. Mmm. I tell you what, now with water, though, vanilla is coming up a lot more with the spice than the oak note. Citrus note's still there, but vanilla kind of came up to sort of give it a little bit of competition. This is kind of reminding me of like a bit of a harsher, sharper, spicier, like um, Craig Alec even. A little bit of like that wormwood kind of note coming through in here. I don't think Linkwood is that, but I'm getting a little bit of that wormwood funk. Really complex. The spice is not really... It doesn't go with the initial upfront flavors. <clears throat> it go, it, it, it's, it's, it, I said prickly spice. Mm-hmm. And it goes with a very, on the palate, a very sharp citrus note. So those two aggressive notes do kind of contrast to some degree. But but I, I agree. The pepper note, it, it, it's, it's a big pepper note. Well, you know, a lot or of big people, spice A lot of people like prickly pear kind of notes, which is a common thing I've seen in a lot of independent bourbons. And I've never been a fan myself, so that's kind of where this is leaning, is that mixture. That Again, it's a lot of people really love it. I don't love that particular note. I'm going to go a little more water on this. Um, I want to see if I can actually... I think it's going to get spice here, but I'm just kind of wondering if there's some other flavors that are going to get teased out that'll help sort of bring this to where I want it. Woo. Even um, with water, man, that is still prickly on the palate. Well, you know, usually wood spice comes up when you add water so that's why i'm expecting the more water i put in the more wood spice but i'm wondering if it's going to bring in something else or it's going to do something with the citrus notes mm. i really like the nose on this really like the nose yeah with water do you agree that it, it well you can tell me if you agree later but i think it added more vanilla to it mm. a little more vanilla the first taste i had i didn't really get that extra vanilla but the, now that i put a little more water because I went really light the first time just because I knew I was going to come in for more. Sure. Um, so you're dead on now that I've put a little more water. It actually, believe it or not, added a little bit more viscosity because I think it actually <laughs> turned down the um, the spice early. The spice came in later. And so it actually brought up a little bit more like oiliness uh, on the front of my tongue. It did delay the spice slightly. It gave me an extra, it gave you a two count. I actually like it with a little extra water. That's it's, it's an aggressive up. whiskey. <clears throat> yeah, no, this is not. Uh, I mean, we're fifty-eight percent, but it's not really aggressive in a super alcohol way. Again, it's it's the oak spice note ways that make it aggressive. Now, I'm sure is that driven by alcohol to some degree. I it's got to be right, absolutely. But it's not like I'm getting like, ooh, that's a super punchy alcohol note it's at a all. Twenty-three year old whiskey. I mean, it's right. <laughs> well refined there, but seventies disco, seventies wood. You know, yeah, but for a twenty-three year old whiskey, it is. There's some alcohol notes on here. It's not ethanol or something like cheap. I mean, it's very nice. <laughs> wonderful beautiful alcohol but you know you have a lot of these bourbon drinkers who they don't like scotch a lot of times because it's not punchy enough it's not got enough ump uh, this ain't that this has got all that and a bag of chips this will bite you back it's like a puffer fish you you it, be a gentleman mm. let it in then it gives you the spikes <laughs> i'll uh, take your word on that one I'm not sure how you discovered that <laughs> i didn't i'm just imagining Sounds like a good weekend in Brazil. <laughs> I heard there aren't many bad ones. All right, Dustin, let's get to whiskey score here. And I know with all these whiskeys we do blind, it's always hard to, to have a score. Allow me to go first. I'm sure if we look on Whiskey Base afterwards, they're going to say this is a 91 or something. It wouldn't shock me. Wouldn't shock me at all. I can only go by, I, I, so I think it probably is around a 90 as far as the quality of whiskey is, but I, I'm going to give whiskey score based on my enjoyment of the whiskey, okay. and that's an 89. I think it's a good whiskey, not a great whiskey, and I just think, as we've said many times, I'm not a huge spice guy, mm-hmm. and this is, and I like oak, and I like spice, and I like oak, 
mm-hmm. but this is a very prickly, spicy, peppery oak for me anyway. And there's yeah. not a lot of the like, liquid, liquid spirits are pretty light spirit. I, I think I'm pretty confident in saying that at least. Like flavors, but it has some long to it. Well, it kind of reminds <clears throat> me of Glen Morangy in that way. Like this, I don't agree. Well, the, the, it has kind of some viscosity in the malt, but it also is is generally a fruity malt. Fruit, yeah, but it's it's punchier. It's way punchier. I agree. I agree. There, 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 there are some similarities. It's more assertive. There are some similarities. Um, but yeah, that's where I'm at as, as far as this one. 89, my friend. Where are you at? So you covered the gambit that I was thinking, which was between an 89 and a 91. Yep. Um, I'm going to give this a 90. Um, I, I I love the nose on this thing. This is one of my favorite um, bourbon cask noses I think I've ever had. So strong. It's way up there. I love the ump. I love the power. I like that by adding water, it really did kind of soften up some of the parts I didn't like, brought a little more vanilla, mm-hmm. um, gave it a really good mouthfeel. So I really enjoy that. Yeah, it's spicier than I like. This is not my go to. And that's why I agree with you that, you know, I think people who prefer bourbon casks would put this in that 91, mm-hmm. maybe even 92 category. It really is an exceptional example of that. But this is kind of not where I go when I, this is not my happy place. In bourbon cast, so 90 I think is fair. I, you could have convinced me 91 or an 89, but that's what I was I had in my head. Well, they heard the flavors. If that kind of gravitates more towards the things that they yeah. like, you know, um, sharp sh- the sharp citrus yeah. note, heavily spiced oak notes, they're gonna like this. I mean, my tongue is fatigued right now, Mike, from this whiskey. Like <laughs> it is like literally, like, I can feel numb. We thought this would be a simpler whiskey than the Port Allen. Yeah, I mean, like yeah, because we, we kind of order our whiskeys based on kind of what we're expecting, and we saw the color. We saw the proof and said, you know, it's Linkwood. Man. The first buzz, I was like, oh boy. It's going to be rough for any whiskey oh, coming after this one. Oh boy, this man, is spicy. Does this have a punch. <laughs> this is spicy. Anyway, I'd like to say thanks to our oh, buddy man. in Nashville for sending us this sample. Always a gentleman. Um, i got to get out to Nashville pretty soon. It's a great city. Yeah, we need both need to get down there. And I meant to uh, go last year, but my wife got pregnant, so that destroyed all of those plans. She's no, you can't really take your wife to a bar when she's pregnant. People... I would imagine even in Nashville look down upon that. They do in Ohio. I mean, as long as they're not drinking, I mean, it's just the DD. Um, right. Now your wife's going to look down upon you as you're drinking with her watching you do that. I, I think I'm projecting. I think that's what it is, Dawson. I think I feel like she would be frowned upon my time. I've, I've met your wife. She would not agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Those are our thoughts on the whiskey. If you guys had a chance to try Linkwood, 23-year-old. From Rare Malts, 1972, 58.4% FUB, because they're at every local gas station, I'm sure. Let us know what you guys think. Easy one to pick up, I'm sure. Yeah. And if you guys did, um, until next time, what do we wish the folks, Dustin? Happy, apparently, auction drinking. We'll see you next time.